Hello, everyone, and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. Many Oklahoma wheat fields got a welcome drink of water this past week. And as we start to think about spring, it's a good idea to also consider some of the other things that could impact the crop over the next couple of months, including disease. Here's our extension wheat pathologist, Bob Hunger. Well, last fall there was fairly good moisture early and uh, there was a fair amount of, of wheat that was planted early. And in that, especially the early planted wheat, uh, there was a lot of leaf rust that developed in the fall. These plots here, this trial that we're in front of, are uh, Dr. David Marburger's variety demonstration strips. And you can see in the back strips, that was the early planted wheat in uh, mid-September. The shorter green wheat in the front was the later planted, and that was late October. You can see a big difference between those. It was in the early planted strips that we saw a lot of leaf rust develop in the fall because that growth was there early when there was moisture. What does that translate to then this time of year? Well, as we went through the winter, there was a, a dryness, a lot of drought, and some a couple of very extreme cold events that uh, killed a lot of the leaf rust infected leaves and that's a lot of what the yellowing that you see in that early planted strips back there. No leaf rust did I ever find in the, the later planted strips here in the front. Now that we're getting into the spring and uh, especially since we've gotten a, a good rainfall just uh, yesterday, uh, that's when I thought well I better start looking for some of the foliar disease to see if that leaf rust overwintered and is still around in that uh, early planted uh, strips to the back. You've pulled a sample plant. Do you want to tell us about that and kind of what you're observing? Well, this is, uh, uh, like I say, was pulled from the early planted strips back there. And you can see that a lot of the older lower leaves are completely dead. And if you look at them very closely, I, I don't know that you'd be able to pick it up with the camera, but you can see a few pustules in there. But when you start looking at the, uh, the green leaves, for example, there's one right there. You can see a few leaf rust pustules on that leaf, uh, indicating that leaf rust did overwinter on this variety, and I found it in several varieties that are susceptible to leaf rust. So that means the inoculum made it through the winter, and now that we have moisture coming, that inoculum will spread, and if you have a susceptible variety, leaf rust could take off. Again, it's going to depend on the weather. You have to have temperatures a little warmer than we've had the last couple days. And of course, you have to have the free moisture on the leaves for the rust to really spread. Our neighbors to the south are a lot of times an indicator of what may be headed our way. What are you hearing from your, your peers in Texas? Well, in Texas, uh, over the last week and a half, I've gotten a couple reports. Uh, they have found very little stripe rust in Texas. They're, they have found some, but very little. And of course, that's the one we're most concerned about this time of year because it likes the much cooler temperatures. So there's not going to be a lot of stripe rust inoculum to blow up from Texas into Oklahoma. At least it doesn't appear that way. But they have also found a, a moderate to a heavy amount of leaf, rot, leaf rust across quite a bit of Texas. So there will be leaf rust inoculum coming up from Texas, but also we apparently have a, quite a bit of inoculum of it in the, the state of Oklahoma itself. With this in mind, what do produce, producers need to be doing the next month or so or couple of months. Okay. Yeah, they, they, uh, they need to be watching, they need to be scouting their fields, know if it's, they have a resistant or susceptible variety, and look for leaf rust and uh, stripe rust both, and just be aware that that's going to occur. I wouldn't recommend that anybody should start spraying right now for leaf rust by any means. Stripe rust is a little bit different. If they find stripe rust, uh, that, that can, can explode in a hurry, but it sounds like we're not going to have much inoculum for it to get started early in the state. Uh, if, if you're a no-till grower and you have fields with a lot of residue in them that were in wheat uh, last year, those, those growers should be looking more for the leaf spotters, uh, tan spot and septoria leaf blotch, as well as leaf rust and stripe rust, just to know if, if they should be thinking about uh, putting a spray application on to help maintain the yield and quality of their wheat. Will you be traveling the state this spring to kind of check things out around the state? Yeah, I'll probably be starting next week, uh, next week or the week after, and, and looking to see what's going on because, especially further south, I mean, you've heard some of the people talk about first hollow stem is coming very shortly, and, and uh, that, that typically will mean that the diseases are going to be there too. So I'll start down south and then work my way north.
Okay, Bob, keep us posted. I'll do that. We'll see you soon. Okay.